I don't know it should be based in Lincoln. I will take it up on your behalf if you want to. I don't know if you say it until the end. If not, I can give you one of my cards and I will deal with it on your behalf. And there's also Health Watch who you need to get in contact with to raise the same issue. That's what I'm asking somebody That's else to get myself to do. Thank that. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more for any more? Madam? Hello, uh, my name's Rachel Gray. I actually live at Porterwick, um, near Boston, but I'm one of the SOS campaigners fighting to keep our services at the Pilgrim Hospital. Um, I attended the Health Watch meeting a couple of weeks ago where Mr Gaskell attended. I know you're looking um, at point 12 later on. I just didn't know if you wanted a little bit more information on that from us, from our perspective, or, or whether you're just happy to deal with that later. So now I'm quite happy for the lady to speak. I don't know if I am, to be fair, but we've got to keep it brief, yeah. Yeah, obviously. You've got three minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Obviously, um, I, I came to help watch and saw Mr Gaskell. Um, as a campaign group, obviously, we're very concerned because it affects the Skegness area significantly with the downgrades that have happened today at the local hospital, on the children's ward, and obviously it affects gestational babies that are born uh, under the... Let me just interrupt you one second. I understand that, but this is this meeting we have here today is for residents of Skegness. You're not a resident of Skegness, to be fair. Okay. Okay, that's fine. No, but please carry on. Uh, just pointing out. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, I have. You're here banging a drum, which is fine, but. No, I'm not here to bang a drum at all. I've just come along to give you some some wording on it. I didn't know that. It doesn't matter, that's fine. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think I'm your resident for over the road. As some of you know, I do try and go to the gym every morning and I attend the embassy. It is well attended, even at 6 o'clock in the morning, I can assure you, right the way through. We also have a swimming pool there, which is very, very well attended, particularly in the weather we've been having. Uh, as you come down from the main road to the gym, there's a piece of grass on the left-hand side, the side of Yates, and I did a rough count this morning and there is roughly 5,000 dog ends there. Is there anything we can do to alleviate this? Because it looks the right site for all the money making, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It is an understanding the issue, and we still can't do it. So um, I can raise it with the office of concern. Thank you. 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 Thank Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I'm going to bring it up before Council. We've brought this up for the last three years. Coaches, they're still going down Lomley Road. We have two signs up, one either end of the town. No coaches, paid buses only. Still doing it. Every time I bring it up, we'll look into it. Still no answer. Who is in charge of it? Who's going to do something about it eventually? I mean, it's bad enough now with the buses, how they are going down there, which is the paid buses. Um, once the coaches start coming down there, that road comes to a dead standstill. Nothing moves. I think we've got, a, we've got an eye wave officer with us, and when it comes to that gender item, I think we might be able to have, have a talk to you. But I do agree with you, we have got issues down there. And there's been issues as long as I've been a councillor, to be fair. And, and some of my colleagues have been in years before me. So hopefully we'll, get, we'll discuss it now, if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let me have a representative from the police force here. I'm Kevin Evans, Clover Avenue. Can I inquire what's being done to deal with things like? what I personally call movie traffic offences. People on mobile phones, which is quite common in the Skegness area, and motorists failing to stop at red lights. On uh, by the pier, on Grand Parade, it's pedestrian crossing. I personally have noticed been run over at that crossing three times by motorists failing to stop. 
also on Roman Bank, there is another crossing, another end of the Gulf Avenue, had the same problem. On one occasion, we were actually crossing the road, the person who failed to stop the cyclist, and then the cyclist could be a pain on the backside. Um, but one of these two cyclists who failed to stop actually went on the opposing carriageway and across there. Something needs to be done before somebody is killed on those crossings. Did you walk that time? No. Okay, I, I'm not actually aware of the issue of people reaching red lights uh, uh, now. I'm sure the mobile are aware of that. Uh, in terms of enforcement, I think we use a mobile phone in the line. Um, the fatal call is part of our, uh, our strategy. It's, it's enforced on the Super OST, who I do bid for each month. They will be in the same mess for um, well, at least part of this week, which is the uh, fatal call enforcement week, um, championed by the police uh, union. So we will have to make enforcement in town for that. That's an ongoing thing. And unfortunately, I don't think we can perform the fact that yesterday all the stats for the tickets given out. And we are getting tickets out for people on mobile phones, seatbelts, and maybe it has to be mentioned. So yeah, enforcement takes place. We won't catch everybody. Um, report it if you see it. Give um, us a call on one and get them on the plate. It's fantastic. We should pull that up afterwards. Or at the very least, send it out to sort of report what we have seen. Uh, if we identify it in an area, then that was important. Okay. So we all want that one mention on that one. Last time I rang 101, it came there. Did it work? 101 doesn't go to him because he was the head of the No, I was tapping my front room and it came there. It was rang 101 and it came over to the head of one. I can't answer that. I'm not aware of what I was. I know that's been damaged. It may have been. I think we we'll just carry on. So the exact same way you can use myself when you come down to the course. I can't see that. Oh, okay. Do you have a repeat of our special events at night where they are roasting down there? They are an unusual straight road. They are roasting down there. You can go around the beacon park. Can I just keep going? Just keep going, sorry. Yeah. The beacon park drive, I'm well aware there's an issue down there. And to a great extent, I've never been to this night. About the traffic survey done, speed down there is horrendous. We've given out um, no end of parking tickets. There's been an awful lot of enforcement, I'm not sure if we've seen it down the yeah, I have. Yeah, I see, yeah. yeah, so and we keep plugging away. As of yesterday, I put the bid into the force for uh, the Sacred Roads team to come down and hit that again. They're a small team. Um, I get them when I get them, but they've been doing some sterling work. We've, we've just missed them. Um, so I'm optimistic we'll get them back this month. They've a little bit more for us. Uh, we're the best one in the world this time of year. We've talked to it, of course, with the... I understand. Uh, I understand. So it's on the radar. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to inform Mr. Mayor to your ward as well. There's some children actually play with the line there, mm -hmm. and there was a new number of fatality in the child. We've had a couple of nasty incidents down there, and we've been looking at that more seriously. We have said that. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to the agenda now, so we've got a few minutes for the last meeting, which will be back. Uh, agenda item 12, as I've already alluded to, I'm the chairman of Health Street, the leading chair, so I'm going to withdraw from this motion because we are still dealing with this of the Lincolnshire County Council, so I'm waiting to be a part of the debate. And also, agenda item 14, a B type declaration as one of the um, trustees of the organisation's department. Okay, public participation, item four. That's the top one, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Basis. 
uh, and on the basis that that's all the resources that we have to have. But uh, we've had a commitment from our uh, executive member for highways that we will go to uh, looking at permanently uh, repairing potholes where feasibly possible. Um, you will have seen, I hope, that uh, when you're driving around, that a lot of like, square or diamond shaped patches actually appearing on the network. These, these are the permanent repairs that we're actually doing. Uh, and the ideal is that we actually sort of them, we have to clean out all the debris, we tack over them to put a uh, bitumen in the bottom, we actually fill them with hot material, and then we actually uh, uh, compact them and uh, seal them round. And it's all done to uh, an approved standard. The material we're using, whereas previously we had to use temporary repair materials, we now use permanent hot material in the main. The only cold materials we do use are actually very high specification and uh, uh, portal proof materials which are used for very special high stress sites on the uh, on the main road network and they're done as an emergency response. So occasionally you will see patches where we don't actually cut them out and there's a couple of reasons why we may do that. One is because the, the road surface itself may be well past the cell by day, which a lot of the roads in the uh, county are. Uh, and if we have tried to sort of them, you'll find that the road has just disintegrated, we'll be basically shaking our tails all, all around the county. So those we will clean out and clear out as much of the loose material as possible. We will use the same hot material, we will compact it, and where possible we'll seal it but it won't look like a proper patch. But it is using the permanent materials in the permanent manner. What we do find is that where we do get failures, uh, the big failure of the potholes fail, most of that is actually attributed to the material around it failing, not the pothole itself. So the repairs are generally saying, we can't guarantee that they're all saying, like we can't guarantee any new road surface will 100% you know, stay in. We always get failures. The failures are very, very low. So there is a vast improvement there. One of the downsides to doing that is that it takes a lot longer because there's a lot more work involved. Uh, we have to get hot material uh, brought in from uh, either Lincoln or Grimsby so we don't have stockpiles uh, around because it would just go off too quickly. But one of the things that we are doing to actually address that is uh, around the county we've got six new machines, hot boxes, which uh, uh, look a little, little bit like a gritter, but without the uh, spreading attack on the back. Uh, those actually keep the material in prime condition so that we can actually use it. We've got six around the county, we've got two in East Lindsay, uh, I must admit, it took a lot of fight to get that, because initially we were only down for one. So those uh, machines, uh, we've done an assessment, and we're actually getting twice as much work out of those as we were out of the original gangs. So there are savings there, although the process is more expensive. Uh, we've also got another three gangs which go around with insulated lorries, which also do the hot repairs, but they don't actually use the hot box. But they do use the same techniques. So the material isn't uh, maybe in such prime condition because we can't temperature monitor it, we can't keep it at that perfect temperature, but it is within tolerance, so it does work. So in essence, 90% of the repairs we're doing at least are permanent repairs. So the gone the days where it just took a few trouble to put the hole and over the lorry wheel. If you do see any of that happening, let us know. Because, as with all of these things, you will always get the odd one who tries on, uh, and we are going to have to make sure that they don't. So, that is the, the process we're using. Uh, so, uh, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, the length of time it's taken from reporting a repair, uh, obviously because we've had the, uh, the issue with the police from the we've had a very uh, hard winter. Historically, we have had long-term underfunding of the highway network, and that's not just thinking to, that's around the country. The roads aren't in a good place, and it only takes a winter like we've had, with the very wet, very cold, a lot of snow, a lot of ice, uh, and a lot of temperatures going up and down for the reason. The worst possible thing to do for a road, especially one that's 
past the cell by date. Uh, I think we did an assessment, I think the average length of time for resurfacing a road is get on about 150 years. Uh, a road won't last 150 years, so we do have to come in and do the work. But because there's so many of them, the, uh, the number of potholes we've had reported over the uh, winter period uh, and continuing on into the spring has been well over three times what we would normally get in, a, in that same period. We, we haven't had a lot of extra resource to actually resolve that, so consequently there is a backlog. We are getting on top of that because we've brought in uh, extra gowns. We The county has invested some extra money. It's never enough, and uh, I'll be the first one to say that you know, it's never enough. The figures prove it's never enough. The backlog in Lincolnshire is uh, around about £400 million pounds backlog, the backlog of investment into the roads. We only get a budget of 20 and 50 million a year. It doesn't take a few years to work out. But we are working at it and things are improving slowly. The number of reports we get to Pothole has gone down considerably. And uh, you, know, you can see the benefit out there. We are actually starting to get people saying, we are actually doing a good job now. And it's nice to be able to hear that, but we've still got a long way to go to get on top of these things. Um, we, are uh, just about over the backlog from the winter, but obviously we've still got the water coming out so between then and now. So we're still working. Uh, uneven pavements and no street lighting. I think it's been well advertised that the uh, Lincoln County Council has uh, uh, switched off a lot of uh, street lights. I've put some of them on uh, part time uh, uh, lighting, you know, going off at midnight, coming off five o'clock in the morning. It's the same for a lot of authorities. We have to make savings. And the electricity uh, uh, costs for the county for street lighting is absolutely huge. Any savings we can make there, we can invest in the rest of the network and actually try and get on top of things like the possible and obviously keep the roads in as good a condition as we can get. Uh, we understand that no street lighting is, is a, a very sensitive issue. Uh, but all of the uh, areas where the street lighting has been turned off or amended you know, has been assessed. Uh, I don't have any control over that, I'm afraid, so uh, I can't actually comment on specific uh, cases. But I know it's being reviewed on a fairly regular basis. And you've probably heard uh, Councillor Davis on the uh, radio or television talking about it on a number of occasions. Uh, we do know that there are a number of uneven payments in the town. Um, we've only got a very small budget for doing footway works, but we are uh, making inroads into that slowly. You will have seen in some places around the town with, we've been doing some patching of footways and we're doing some uh, slow team. It's no good for the town centres themselves, it is for the residential estates and the, uh, uh, the ageing tarmac footpaths. Where we've got the, uh, uh, the paving slabs, we are still trying to convert those to tarmac where we can. But they are less of an issue for pedestrians and for ourselves and maintaining as well. Uh, but also we're, uh, we're looking at places like Lumley Road, so looking at uh, trying to get some of those uh, sections uh, relayed. We're having to plan that because you don't want us to come in the middle of the summer to do that, for obvious reasons. Uh, which is the time when we usually have most of our resources available, because that's when they're not risky. So, uh, we are planning on get over the next winter, not this winter coming, but the following winter, to try to get some of those sections finished, uh, which should hopefully uh, improve things. In the interim, we will keep them safe, and that usually means taking out the uh, individual cable and parking, which doesn't look pretty, but it's safe. And that's all we can really do with those at the moment, until we've got a full colour scheme to go on. Moving on to the, to the next issue, uh, the promenade between North Parade and the Clock Tower. I understand the, the issue there is to say that uh, people parking on the WL lines. Uh, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, the tables are allowed to park on it. As long as they're not causing an obstruction. If they're causing an obstruction, uh, then it uh, isn't a, an important issue for ourselves, it's an important issue for. So, uh, 
So we, we, there's nothing we can do with that unless uh, <coughs> we actually make it no loading. In which case, you, know, you can't make deliveries, you can't have your buses, you can't have the other people in the new So we have made facility for disabled uh, uh, parking on South Parade to help try and alleviate it. We know that people will park where they want to. Um, in favor, it's not what we can do with that. Um, next one, uh, the speed limits uh, outside Southview. I know this has been uh, quite a, uh, uh, <coughs> an issue for some time. There's uh, been some policy issues out uh, that area. Um, at the moment, there is a planning application, well, there's a planning application in for further development on that, uh, which we're aware of. Um, as it stands at the moment, the policy for speed limits does rely quite heavily on density and on the average speed of traffic. At the moment, if we tried to introduce a speed limit there, it wouldn't go anywhere, because it wouldn't meet the criteria. What we're waiting for is the uh, development to come on stream, which should then give us uh, more uh, scope to actually look at the future of the appropriate speed limit. Uh, the next one uh, uh, about communications with the uh, Lincolnshire County Council. Um, obviously, uh, over the last uh, well, a year gone February, we, the county had a big restructure. Uh, and I'm assuming most of you are aware that uh, uh, the way that uh, the highways in the, the whole county has been changed. Uh, I used to be the uh, the area highway manager for Scape and the other the southern part of it. Uh, my remit now covers the whole region. Uh, the number of staff I've got now is actually about the same as I had when I was only covering the southern part. So we've, we've spread a bit thin. Um, so there has been a, a, a change in uh, uh, approach to the county, which is to try and uh, uh, avoid meetings where they're uh, not productive. That doesn't mean that we're not interested in talking to you. I mean, I've come along tonight to, to discuss uh, these issues with you. Uh, and we're quite happy to have meetings on occasion when we've got specific things to talk about. Uh, initially, any reports must go through to our call centre or through the uh, uh, website. I know it's a bit impersonal, but uh, if we don't do it that way, then the uh, uh, questions or the reports don't necessarily go to the right person so we can get those out as quickly. Uh, with the number of officers I've got, if I've got one I'll leave, it would take quite a while for them to get ground to the extent that we don't first let you know So we've got to do it that way. Uh, and there are other teams that pick up other issues we might have a better place to deal with the issues as well. So in essence we are still quite happy to meet with you. It's got to be uh, uh, manageable for us as well. Um, if we're meeting uh, people, bear in mind I've got well over 200 parishes and town councils to look after and have a lot of resources to go and see if we can do it for you. However, you know, what we are doing um, is we are actually arranging uh, meetings through the town council members and I know your members here at the County Camp Council have actually uh, expressed an interest in doing this. So we can meet with a number of representatives from town councils, the uh, council councillors and the uh, portfolio holder and myself, to actually talk about more general issues rather than KKS where we've got uh, trees on the highway. Um, we will be doing some uh, uh, wide scale tree works later on in the year, uh, once we get over the summer period and the bird nesting season and uh, all the rest of it. Um, I do have access to a budget uh, uh, for three works. Uh, it won't do everything, but we're going to be trying to target those areas where uh, most impact. So places like Lincoln Road, which is the main uh, road coming into the worst pregnancy, we want to work on the uh, Right. Yeah, why when we publish timescales for highway repair this, uh, we don't stick with this? Uh, well, I hope some of the answers I've already given you will give you a bit of an understanding of why that is. Uh, we have Portland on Lumley Road about uh, uh, no coaches. Uh, as a 
Highway Authority, uh, we do uh, actually put uh, traffic put, uh, regulation orders in place, at the consultation with the police and the uh, town council and uh, various other people. Um, as far as parking is concerned, we have our own uh, uh, civil parking enforcement officers who actually deal with that matter. As far as uh, uh, road traffic effects is going through uh, uh, you know, the sign, I'm afraid that's not we don't do the enforcement on that. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> um, right, uh, the next one on the uh, list, uh, uh, parking restrictions on ground for a going to a stop. Uh, our technical services partnership are still looking at that, uh, so that we're waiting for the outcome of that. Uh, there's no point in saying anything. Um, and then, and then and once we've got some uh, formal plans, we'll get this together. Uh, uh, we, we mentioned this briefly earlier. Uh, uh, myself and the portfolio of the committee for meet of the year. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. And uh, yeah, I've never seen you so for doing blue uh, for a long, long time. Uh, it wasn't. Uh, the message that you're bringing is that the council have or the Inchia Council Council has got no money. Uh, and basically um, you're having to do things on Tuesday because the government isn't giving you enough money. And we know that the government isn't giving us enough money for what our needs are on the roads. But I want to make sure, make sure that we actually get our fair share on the East Coast. And I would like to see what the actual scale of the Inch division is. When I tried to get the uh, information out, it was almost impossible to make sure the head of capita, I just get the information as a town council, what a uh, person for a resident in Winston gets, compared to a resident in Spalding, compared to a resident in Skegness per capita on road highway infrastructure. Today, I have not got that information. Second point is, and I know it's not your fault, you're doing blue. It's no good to me because my council tax keeps on going up and I'm paying for a service that A, my cars are getting damaged, the people that I take or the children that I take to school who are disabled, severely disabled, when they go over a pothole, not a pothole, a crater, they have rods in their backs, they are in pain, etc. Can you imagine what that feels like for that, for that child going uh, down a crater? Three, when we report to, to your customer service, is the back room staff, it's almost impossible to speak to anybody. They're rude, they put the phone down on you, they don't keep you on the phone for X amount of minutes and push you around, around the whoever. I've used it and I know it happens, it's happened to me on several occasions. That's not very good for a public service. You're answering to the public, you take the public first, and you should be, or we should be getting our fair share here. Not all of it is your fault, as I said, it's the government, they're not funding you correctly. We know that, all of us know that, we see it on our tellies every day of the week when people make their choices when it comes to voting. What I'm making sure is that we get our fair share here, and I don't see that. I go all over the county, I go to various areas, and I see a difference between us and other areas of the county, and I don't believe we get our fair share here. Thank you. I'll make it quick. I've got plenty of questions, but I'll save them for the town council visit. Uh, you spoke about the enforcement. Um, you have the traffic wardens, the police do when you go through your entry. Who's responsible for the unloading um, out of hours, like down on the road when you're only supposed to do it between 9 and 4, but you're there, well, after 4, but you're there at half past 3, really. Who's responsible for that? Well, that would be uh, our enforcement. That would be the traffic wardens. Yeah, the civil parking enforcement. The parking enforcement. But that's that's them. Yeah, that's that's them. That's what we're doing. Colleagues, would it be better if uh, if Andy Ratcliffe um, answered the questions that we go along? We've got a link to the end. What, what would you what would you suggest? I think it's working quite well at the moment. As long as you, you know, bear in mind that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you very much, Arjun. Hello, Neil. It seems a while well since uh, we were working together. But, yeah. Um, I know that you're under the cosh, and we're not here to be your. We're here to try to get the best deal we can. What does drive? If you're in customer services, you might be 30, 40 minutes before you get through, mm. and I'll say, is it possible you can get an officer to ring you back, or is it possible to put me through to speak to someone? Mm. No, you just stonewall you. Yeah. Who made the decision to make officers unapproachable? Because we've got a situation now where public servants are not accessible to the public. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Can you tell me what's happened to our gully wagons? There's about every one in four drains is blocked up. And when we get every rain, one drain has to cope with four of them. Mm -hmm. And it's not taking water. I mean, you get Friday, or like Friday was a bad day, fair enough, one and a half inches of rainfall, no drain to take that. But in normal rainfall, drains are blocked up all the way along the street. It's not just a puddle, it goes all the way along the street. Yeah. All the way across the road to put it. You know, I mean, all I can hear from you at the moment, and I'm going to say it, sorry, there's a lot of excuses of everything you've just said in here tonight. Thank you. Councillor Kirk. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know my frustrations. Mm -hmm. That said by the time. It does concern me, and I think the road in Lincoln can skip this. Quick answer to the market, that comes from a lot less than everybody else. Um, what we got to spend the weeks. I think the roads are still going to be atrocious. The reason I mentioned that is my need for time, which to me says they're going to get worse. So, are you suggesting that there'll be a time in the near future where, if it isn't an A road, we will need to be buying tractors? Uh, because there are certain roads in Skegness now where you're going to need a 4 by 40 and down. I don't see that there could be any further decline without cranking up to the good and go back to dirt tracks. So I think that some dirt tracks would be better than the roads we've got. But can you explain to me exactly what you might like manage decline? That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. 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 I hope I'll remember that at least. I mean, there's, there's, there's a number of questions there about the, uh, uh, the call centre. Uh, as far as the call centre is concerned, they were given the instruction that uh, uh, actually passing calls through to offices is to be avoided where possible, unless it's an ongoing situation that is being dealt with. The reason for that is because, as I mentioned earlier, with a huge cut in the number of frontline officers who can actually deal with these things. And if they spend uh, you know, quite a bit of time answering the phone and trying to deal with the inquiry of the general public, to say basically, thank you, we've got it on the list and you know, we'll get round to it when we get round to it. It's actually keeping them away from actually getting out and actually getting works uh, ordered and actually getting problems resolved. Uh, it's not ideal. Uh, it's not the way that uh, my officers at uh, home myself uh, you know, started in this industry to do. We always want to be public servants yeah, communication with the public uh, and actually say, here's some good news we're going to do X, Y, and Z. We are still doing some of that. Uh, we are still doing things. But I understand that the frustrations that are there that when you talk to uh, people, A, it takes so long to get through, B, yeah, yeah, you get so more. The call centre operatives are all trained and uh, we have found that generally they are doing as well as the human being expected. There are always one or two who will work, you know, either they've got an off day or there will be problems with it. Uh, when uh, the supervisors in there pick up on that, so we've got a liaison officer who actually works very closely with us uh, and the call centre and with the uh, uh, communications team to actually try and get all these messages out. Uh, and they will pick up. Decision. The, right, that's to disconnect it. officers from the public. Yeah. Well, the, the decision was actually made by the executive manager. Yeah, we acknowledge that it is a big problem. We acknowledge that uh, you know people driving down roads and uh, encountering large potholes is not what we want. We know that people pay their their, their, their taxes, their community charge, everything else. I, I I'm in the same boat as you are. 
you know, I'm a resident of East Lindsay, so I have exactly the same problem. Uh, and it is frustrating. Um, it is one of those things that uh, uh, in an ideal world, we would not be in this situation. Uh, unfortunately, we are not in an ideal situation, and these things are out of uh, And I can't really add any more than that. So they are playing catch up on some of the other areas. So it may be that we don't actually get the cleanse this year. However, you've alluded to issues where you've got a number of gullies blocked in the water. Specific areas like that, please report them through the uh, call centre on, on the website because we will try and target those areas. We won't be able to do a full clean, but we will try and target those areas. Thank you very much. Councillor Kurtz, question on the Sorry, my question was, Mr. Mayor, what does the officer manage to try and look like to say this? Well, managed decline, uh, I can't see any uh, improvement in the road condition overall, uh, if things stay the same as they are. Um, we have, uh, uh, when we actually look at the budgets we have available, you yeah. will know there are a small number of people who use Facebook and other social media to criticise the council and other organisations that operate in the town. We all know who they are and the position they previously held. It seems to lead them to believe they have a special insight or right to comment about things they clearly have little or no knowledge about. Comments about <coughs> organisations, decisions, policies are fine. But these comments are becoming increasingly nasty and personal, directed at individuals rather than organisations. In the last few weeks there have been comments about council, councillors, and others, including employees, those who manage or lead other organisations in the town. Some of these comments are at best insulting and malicious, and maybe and maybe libelous and damaging to people's reputations. It is difficult for those for those targeted in their official capacities to easily defend themselves. And people who make these comments seem to spend a disproportionate <coughs> amount of their time on Facebook and often make these comments in closed groups where the target is not a member. I think these people are damaging Skegness. Why would anyone want to invest any <coughs> time or effort to improve Skegness when the result is constant personal criticism from a loud, nasty, albeit small group? One way forward would be for the public to challenge these authors to ask their source of information for why they are saying they need to be able to account but without giving them the spotlight they crave. I know that some of those targeted are now considering taking further action. Although I am not making any formal proposal today, I feel that the council needs to be vigilant and ready to act if necessary. And to finish, I would like to add we are an open and transparent council. All our meetings are open and transparent and we welcome the public to come along and see the democracy at work. As you can see, I'll put a statement in front of you, and I would ask all of you to post these on your relative social media <coughs> sites. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Anderson. Mr Mayor, can I support you? As you're probably aware, I have been speaking for the last several are. years, uh, not only me, but my family, um, especially my daughter. Uh, um, I'm always of the belief that we shouldn't have to give our personal details and telephone numbers uh, to the general public and they should actually be personal and should be directed to um, the town. Not only because uh, we get anonymous phone calls and we get threats to our families and to our children as well, which happened to me on numerous occasions. Also racism attacks, burning bricks, windows, you name it, I've had it all over the years. Um, and to, to be fair, it's, it's, not, it's not very nice, but not very nice at all to be um, actually uh, a victim. I've sought help from the police, but they can't, they've got their hands tied because they say they haven't got uh, enough uh, legal power to do anything. It has to be a specific thing. And I've been on numerous occasions uh, to the police asking for help. Regarding fully support you. The government at the last is waking up, as what has been announced. 
I think we need to, when Matt Norman comes, our MP, we need to make them aware of this that's going on. And the government has got to pass more powers so the police can take action against these people. They're face, faceless thugs. That's all they are, faceless thugs. If you saw them in the street, they'll walk the other side because they haven't got the guts to face you face to face. They'll do it in little herds of packs and try and cause distress to not only me or anyone else around here, but also members of the family. Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, Councillor Thank you, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with this. I think we're in a changing society where you know, people, misinformed, ininformed people, have now got the ability to communicate in, in a way that is, is quite negative and detriment. Now, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I think it's absolutely fine. I come to the point that uh, Mark made with regards to our details being on the public domain, and I actually quite agree. I think at times, councillors should be able to withdraw consent for this information being in the public domain. And, you know, maybe that's something that we can do as a, as a council. Everything goes through the, the office for the communication. I think it's an absolutely fine and viable option. But uh, with today's society, I think there is an added risk, and it's getting to a lot of people very quickly in these social media. And I quite agree. Um, I absolutely support this one. Okay, thank you very much. What do you want us to do, Mr. Man? I think I want this to go on the council website that we're taking action. Why 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 did it why did it in the mail now? Because I know that it's minutes. I want it to go to the council's website. I think we need to have quite clearly have a policy that says if councils or offices are attacked in the public domain, this council will firmly defend its position. Because we currently don't do that. We know full well who this is alluded to. We know which officer has been attacked. Why can't our officers stand up before council and say this is disgraceful, this should not be allowed, and we as council should be backing them? So I think we have to push out a policy which says if it does happen, to any councillor or any of our officers, we will act accordingly. And if that means through you, Mr. Mayor, you go and see our sister and we get injunctions against people, then so be it. You know, we wouldn't allow it to happen in any normal life. Why should we allow it to happen just because you're an officer of this council? Councillor Dunker, followed by Councillor Gabriel. I think really we should uh, probably recommend this go to direction strategy and think of a way that we can, can scrutinise this moving forward. But I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I think put it on the council website as a, as a statement would, would be great, and I would second that proposal. But if uh, Mark would also allow me to amend the this direction, stru direction strategy was to scrutinise this as well. Uh, yes, we agree with those changes, If we know who this uh, individual or whoever it is, if one individual or one or few more, why hasn't the council took action now and bring them to book? If you know who it is, for God's sake, bring it out now. Let's have them. Let's have them in court. Thank you very much, Councillor. I support the paper. Something genuine. I, I did used to have a, tank, uh, a county council for 
just to work at Thames Council down there. And that was something that you could do such stuff and monitor. I think this needs to go to the direction of the strategy. We need to stop the We need to move on.